Welcome back to the weekly news roundup. This is the Linux edition. We are back for at least two weeks, and then I'm going to disappear again for a week, although that week we might just premiere the weekly news roundup. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But anyway, uh, we are back for at least a couple of weeks, and we will get back to our regular Friday shows at 8 p.m. Eastern. Of course, we usually also have a supporter show at 7 on Thursdays. And if you are a channel supporter on any of our support networks, you can join into that call or just hang out with us afterwards when they turn the camera off. And uh, let's go ahead and get on into our Linux news. First up, SUSE sends a request to open SUSE to rebrand. Wouldn't you think it? People go all DEI on you and everything starts to implode all around it. I was thinking this might have had something to do with the whole rotten flesh stuff. And then like, no, actually, that was the guy who was on board at both OpenSUSE and SUSE. So uh, I just call me crazy. I just don't have a lot of sympathy of uh, these uh, projects imploding. But it has more to do with uh, OpenSUSE not following the uh, the business uh, ends of SUSE. Of course, SUSE is a for-profit company, and it really, uh, OpenSUSE is kind of like a testing ground area or was, but they're not in, a, in as close to alignment. It's very similar uh, principle we saw when uh, IBM bought Red Hat, and then Fedora's like, uh-oh, what's going to happen to us? <laughs> Where are we going to lose our blue hats here, guys? A uh, very similar thing. Basically, uh, SUSE came down to OpenSUSE and told them they have to rebrand, they have to change their name, they have to change their logo, they have to change a whole bunch of uh, different things, and preferably get back in alignment with SUSE's overall goals. So that is kind of what's going on. So, of course, if they do not take this seriously, then the OpenSUSE project itself as a whole may very well collapse under the weight of itself. And um, I would, uh, I'm would i not going to celebrate the loss of a Linux distribution, but uh, call me crazy. They think I'm rotten flesh. I don't really care <laughs> for whatever that happens to be worth. Fedora 41 workstation with GNOME is set to be Wayland only. We have talked about this before, but they are getting closer and closer. I think the biggest advantage of this might be the distros might start getting a little smaller again for a little bit. You know, I first got into Linux. I know some of you guys have been into Linux far longer than I am, and distros were like, you know, 15 floppy disks, like like Windows was, you know. Uh, but, you know, I got, I got into Linux when a Linux distribution download was about a gigabyte, and now Ubuntu doesn't even fit on a fat 32 drive. And uh, it's become massive and bloated and full of a bunch of stuff. And some of that's for security and some of it's just for bloat. But uh, dropping one entire window compositor from the distro might actually slim things down a little bit. I'm not excited about that complete loss of X, but Fedora has done a tremendous job of getting Wayland to work anywhere and everywhere it can. Now, obviously, you do lose some packages and why some distributions are still shipping Simple Screen Recorder while defaulting to Wayland is completely beyond me because it doesn't work over there. But the fact that at least Fedora is working hard to make sure that Wayland does work with at least everything inside of its core and most things even outside of its core. There are still some areas of concern that I have. I'm not a huge fan of taking away people's choices like this, but it is a decision they're doing. And hey, at least some distribution has to give it a try. And if X is still your thing, well, you might just have to switch to something else or look for another alternative or hey, maybe wait for that Fedora fork that is Fedora running X. I don't know. <laughs> but that is what we are going to expect with Fedora 41, which I believe is coming out pretty soon. Uh, I know the uh, recent version of GNOME, was that 47? I forget. Uh, just came out. Um, uh, but uh, stay tuned for seeing what's going on with those. And this is an interesting one. There's been some discussion here about dropping Grub entirely. And not just Grub, but Grub and all the things like Grub. Uh, who needs all that grubby stuff anyway? What they're trying to do is come up with a model to use the Linux kernel itself as a bootloader. And the idea here is it will add a little bit of security in that there's not an, an application in between your BIOS and your kernel operating system. Now, this 
could potentially have some other negative consequences as well. Uh, not being a hardware guy specifically, I'm not going to guess as to any of those specific ideas. But at the same time, that is what they're working on. If it means completely losing the ability to use Grub, I'm not sure I would like that because I have questions about how one might dual boot an operating system. In that instance, maybe it would work the same way I do it anyway. I don't use Grub and have multiple different operating systems on multiple different disks, get into Grub and then choose which one. I basically choose which distribution I boot into based on which disk I am calling. So for that, uh, it is certainly an interesting idea. And uh, there is certainly going to be a use case for this. So we'll watch this. But the idea is to get around Grub and some of the security implementations of having a sub-application in between your kernel and your BIOS. And on to our final uh, article for this video, the NVIDIA 560 Linux graphic driver to fully adopt open source GPU kernel modules. So uh, this is the 560 driver, which I believe is the next. I don't use NVIDIA guys um, since... NVIDIA has not traditionally played well with Linux. I have just gone to AMD because every time I need to do something, let's just make my life easier. Uh, lo and behold, my, uh, my, my one of my chemistry professors was completely correct. I didn't even know at the time. He says chemists are inherently lazy. Um, now my biochemistry professor disagreed with that, but hey, what can we say? I don't want to make extra work for myself if I don't have to. So if I'm building my computer, uh, let's run AMD instead of NVIDIA. Down the road, this might very well change. It may get to the point where NVIDIA has something to offer, and if everything is open source and going to play nice in the 560 graphics drivers, hmm, we have just opened up to more options in the world and people that might want to use NVIDIA or have reasons to use it we are going to see a little bit better incentive to go ahead and do that and get a lot better results in Linux. That is totally an awesome thing. And so um, this is something from the company. They say they are going to be working on it and it is for the upcoming 560 graphics driver. So it will be fully open sourced. Um, allegedly, as long as they keep going with this. So two years since they first released a Linux graphic driver with open source modules to replace the proprietary closed source ones. Uh, there has been a lot of positive work in this lately because of this. So that is actually really good news for those of us that are into, um, into using NVIDIA, particularly if your games want to use NVIDIA more than AMD. This is really good news for you. Now, if you want to help support the channel, we do have a Patreon page. You can jump on over there, patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. That will help support the channel in, uh, uh, in whatever ways. Uh, we do also have some updates on the book. Of course, we were just at a writer's conference. I ran my idea, crossed a couple of, couple of people. Um, and uh, everyone overwhelmingly thought this uh, whole collection of stories is good. I read two of them in critique groups of people by and large, love the stories. And uh, one of the teenagers there who does the uh, uh, science fiction stuff gave me an excellent title, which I'm going to uh, mention into the uh, uh, one of the private rooms we have over on uh, Matrix first before I tell you guys about it. But in the next uh, couple weeks, I'm going to be asking for feedback, particularly you supporters who've been around for a while. We need to figure out exactly what order to sort all these short stories in. If you are not, uh, if you're not yet, um, uh, not yet a supporter, uh, and you do jump in, you can always go back and read all the old short stories. Although the audio books uh, will have expired, those will only last a month. So uh, with that, uh, patreoncom T-O-M-M If you want to help support the channel, we also have uh, Subscribe Star and Locals as well. Thanks for watching, and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.